I'm here with Hall of Fame promoter Frank Warren. Frank, how are you today? I'm good, yourself? I'm good. Of okay. course I'm good. Of course I'm good. There was uh, plenty of action on over the weekend, uh, notably Anthony Crawler being defeated for the second time against Jorge Linares. Hell of a performance from Linares. Did you catch it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Um, for me, it was all very predictable. You know, before the fight, I always felt that um, Linares had another gear that he, he did that he didn't use in the first fight because he had his hand in. He had a hand injury. But I think he broke his hand in the first fight, and you always felt that Anthony would be up against it, which was the case. And you know, the benefit of hindsight, he should have took the fight with Terry Flanagan. That's what he should have taken. And, let's, and, uh, and, and that would have been a good fight for him and for Terry and a big money fight because I'm sure he never got the same money he got for the first Linares fight. I mean, was, was that Flanagan fight, was it on the table? Was it there, sort of ready off. to go? He had a written offer, not once, twice. He's had two written offers. He had one before the first Linares fight and one for the second. But anyway, it's what it is. And uh, now he's, uh, he's got a long way back because that was quite a bit of a comprehensive defeat for him. I mean, I never, I never give him a round, and I'm not being rude in saying that, but I didn't see him win a round. It might have been one that he might have shared. And uh, it is what it is. Now he's got a long way back. And for him to talk about going up now to fight Ricky Burns, um, well, I think that would be a stupid thing for him to do. But anyway, that's their problem, not mine. So let me go with it. Well, I asked you heading into that fight um, about the crawler Flanagan fight and whether or not that fight would still be there, even if Crawler loses. Oh. Is it? No. <laughs> no, he's got a lot. He's got a lot, lots of um, a lot of. Uh, he's got to get himself back in the game, hasn't he? He's got to get a couple of wins under his belt. First of all, the WBO wouldn't allow him to because he's coming off of two losses, mm -hmm. so that's not going to happen. And uh, you know, Terry's got a tough fight, by the way, against Petrov. That's no walk over. That's a, a very, very tough fight for him. So hopefully he'll come through that, and then we'll see where we're going. But at the moment, we're talking. To, we are. We were talking, and are still talking to Linares. And I don't want to count our chickens, but if uh, Terry comes through his next fight, that's the next fight we'd like to be doing. We want to fight the winners, not the losers. So that's what we're looking at. We're looking at Flanagan versus Linares, unification fight, if Flanagan pulls through against Petrov. Correct, yeah. Well, that's, that's certainly a fight that wasn't really touched upon by the, uh, by the commentary over the weekend. Um, I saw even Terry Flanagan sent out a tweet saying that they, uh, maybe it's like a swear word over there, the F word, Terry Flanagan. Well, it's not that, it's just that they're so biased and they're cheerleaders. I mean, anybody knows that. I think even Andy Lee made a point about yeah. that uh, over the weekend. The Sky commentary is disgraceful. I mean, to not, not acknowledge Terry Flanagan is, is, is a disgrace. You know, uh, why wouldn't you do that? And the only reason you wouldn't do it because they haven't got it. If they haven't got the fight, or oh, the fights have not fired in or having anything to do with Sky, they don't get any mention at all. And that is a disgrace and it's not fair on the fans. You know, the Sky fans deserve to know what's going on in boxing and who's around in boxing. Well, they seem to be clamouring for Linares against Mikey Garcia sort of during that fight. And I thought to myself watching it, you've, you've got a, a world champion probably a couple of miles up the road watching this at home. Why would you not want him? Longest undefeated record in British boxing, by the way. Why would you not want him in there against well, Linares? because it wouldn't be on Sky, would it? Because if he fights him, it would be on Box Nation and, and on BT. Simple, simple as that. And that's the opposition. So you know how it works. That's how the game works. It's pretty pathetic, but that's what it is, mate. It's called fake news, I think they call it nowadays. <laughs> All this fake news going around, you know, what's what they try and brainwash people what's 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 happening when we know it's not happening. And uh, that's the new phrase, isn't it? Now, fake news. Fake news, hashtag fake news, I've seen that used a lot. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of fake news, I was uh, I've listened to a couple of Eddie Hearn interviews on, uh, from the weekend talking about ticket sales and how, how apparently we're, there, there aren't many tickets sold for our Manchester show well, on first April. First of all, how would he know? I mean, as, you know, he doesn't know. I don't know why he says that, and it's a stupid thing to say. But that's him. He's always got something. He should be looking at really at, at his fighter and how he's going to get him back in the game again after that comprehensive defeat. So that's a, that'd be a bit bigger challenge for him, selling as many tickets as he did last time, coming off such a bad loss. But you know, who cares what Eddie Cern says about tickets? The only thing that I associate with Eddie Hearn and tickets is StubHub. Mm -hmm. That's the he's, the he's the friend, the fan, the friend, fans friend, the ticket friend, ticket. All the fans who buy tickets, he's fan friendly. Mr. StubHub sponsors their shows, and we all know what StubHub do with their secondary market. Well, back back to Flanagan. So it, it looks like April the eighth. Well, we know he's definitely out. It's Peter Petrov. He could be the man to sort of ruin any unification dreams that Flanagan's got. 
um, a bit of a scary figure then for, for, for all of us involved with this Peter Petrov that he could come along and spoil the party. Well, I hope he don't, but you know, he's, he's, he's the mandatory now because of uh, the Puerto Rican guy um, decided not to go through with a fight, didn't want to fight Terry, so this guy's in, and it's a tough fight for him. It is a tough fight, but I believe in Terry, and I think Terry's got, uh, I think Terry's one of those fighters that the tougher the opponent he's got in front of him, the more you get out of him. So hopefully that's going to be the case, but we'll find out for sure on the 8th at the MEN Arena. And it'll be good to welcome Jorge Linares back, should Flanagan come through right, that. Let's get this one out of the way then. <laughs> Absolutely, we'd love to do that fight. Good stuff. Well, I'm going to ask you about a bit of an update on Billy Joe Saunders. We spoke about this last week. Um, Saunders just put a video out on his own Twitter, actually, uh, saying that he's, he's been in touch with you, he's been in touch with his, his management team, he's ready to sign. Uh, where are we with this? Well, where we are, we're waiting for the uh, Tom Loeffler and uh, Golovkin to come back for us, come back to us. Um, Bill's ready to go, he wants to fight, we want the fight. Um, but if we, we're not going to hang around forever, so um, we've got to put a time limit on it. We're either going to do it this week or we're not going to do it. And if we don't, we'll move on to something else. But Bill's there, terms are agreed, we've got no problem with any terms for the fight. There's nothing, to, it's whether they want the fight or not. And uh, that, that we will hopefully find out this week and hopefully it'll be good news for Bill. I mean, even post-fight in the, in the interviews, Golovkin talked about this as his dream fight. Do you well, think we that can this... make his dreams come true. <laughs> yeah. he does, it doesn't have to be a dream, it can be reality. And all he needs to do is to tell his management and promoter to make his dream come true and send the contracts so that we can sign it. Because we want it, Bill definitely wants it. It's not an easy fight, it's not a tough fight, but Bill's not a gangster. And as he said today, he'll even go to Kazakhstan to fight him. So... Mr. Golovkin, and I'm a great admirer of you, you know, your dream is to have four belts or fight for four belts. Billy Joe, Billy Joe can make that dream come true for you. Do you feel as though there's hesitation from the camp? And, it, and if so, why? I think uh, his last performance, you know, he, he, it was a, he, made a, he made tough work of the fight. There's no doubt about that he won the fight. He made tough work of it. And I think Bill... And Bill's in good nick, he's been training hard. I think Bill, in, on, on his day, is a very, very tough fighter to beat. Because he's undefeated. You know, there's no doubt about it. Everybody, and every time he's gone in as an underdog in a fight, he's won. So maybe they're having a bit of a, a squeaky bum time. I don't know. We'll see. Do you make anything of Oscar De La Hoya's comments recently? He, he talked about if Golovkin was to take a June fight against Saunders or, or anyone, he'd see it as a, a massive disrespect and that it would jeopardise a potential Canelo-Golovkin fight in September. Well, you know, I've, I've got the utmost respect for Oscar and also for Canelo and whatever. I mean, that's their problem. They can say what they want to do and say about their fights and their fighter. All I'm interested in is Billy Joe Saunders and Bill fighting for that belt. So if they want to make if they want to make that fight, Golovkin wants to make the fight with Bill, the winner of that fight's got the four belts, and the winner of that can fight against Alvarez in September for the four belts. That makes more sense than anything. Or Travers Jr., of course. Alvarez has got his Well, exactly. Who knows what happened? I fancy, I fancy um, him to beat uh, Chavez, but you never know in boxing. You know, things happen. A lot of people fancy Golovkin to beat Bill if he happens, but... The bottom line is, the four belts can be on the line in September to, for, for the winners. So let's get it, get it on, let's get it sorted out. Fingers crossed. So any closing messages, Frank? Uh, no, we just that we've got a great show in Manchester, uh, the, the two Liams, uh, mm. which is going to be the, you know, the battle of the Liams. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a cracking fight. And obviously, some great debuts on the night, the debut of uh, Nicola Adams and the debut of uh, Daniel Dubois and, uh, and, uh, and some great fights on the undercard. We've got, Paul Butler in action, we've got Jack Catterall in action, you know, many, many other young fighters, so I'm looking forward to it. And that, uh, the, the Liam versus Liam fight, uh, big news this week in, in terms of it's now for the WBO Interim Super Welterweight Championship. Well, it is, and uh, the, as we know, the champion is Canelo, and if he goes up a weight, then that belt will become vacant and the winner will become world champion. So let's see what happens. Um, and, it, and the fact that that could happen means that there's more for these two guys to go for. You know, so much on the line. The winner can be the winner could be fighting for the world title, which is uh, fantastic. So, is is it a case of the winner will become the champion when if Canelo was to move up? Is it an automatic well, thing? I can't see Canelo making that weight anymore. I don't think he'll ever make the weight anymore. So that's what I think will happen. Yeah. Um, 
Time will tell. But whatever happens, it's for the interim, so it puts the winner in a great position. But I think that whoever wins this fight will become world champion. Well, world champion in the waiting. We look forward to it. We certainly do. Thanks, Frank. See you, mate.